back. Uh, lots going around. A lot's going on around the world. Obviously, we're kicking it through on Money Monday, and um, I'm joined right now by my good friend. He's with us every Monday because he's my money guest and he's my money friend. And uh, we had to bump him around a little today because we got Brock Pierce, newly announced candidate for president, on the show. But uh, Fernando Uribe is with us now. He's the host of Politically Direct on Eyes on NJ, and. Uh, He's always bringing us up to speed what's happening right next door in the Garden State. Fernando, how are you today, buddy? Thank you. Hey, listen, thank you for having me back on. No, all the time you're with us, and that's not going to change unless you get too cool for us, but uh, <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, so um, you're talking today about this, the new Forbes 400 list and you know a lot of woke liberal elites on there. Um, why, wh what, do you, what do you take issue with here with these folks? Well, you know, John, I look at this list and listen, God bless America. If you can make that money, you know, more power to you. But uh, to no one's surprise, uh, Jeff Bezos, once again, is like the number one on the list. You know, I'm looking at his net worth of $179 billion, along with Bill Gates and others, even Warren Buffett on this list. And it's really amazing to me because it, it's sort of a reinforcement because when you hear them talk, um, you know, and express their political views, they, you know, they, they pretty much sound like the limousine liberals that we like to pounce on on this program where they say one thing and then do another. They're all about equality. And for example, you know, making sure that kids, you know, get school lunches. But meanwhile, they'll send their kids to private schools. Okay. They won't dare send their kids to you know, any sort of public school in the area that they're living in. You know, they're all against walls or border protection, but guess what? They, in their mansions are guarded around the clock by armed security. And there's a wall high enough. I mean, uh, listen, even Spider-Man can't climb it. OK, so I just met a lot of you know, these liberals with their ongoing hypocrisy. And again, God bless them. If you're wealthy like that, great. But again, look at Jeff Bezos. You know, he owns The Washington Post, probably one of the most liberal publications in the country, along with The New York Times. And I, I think more and more Americans are waking up to the fact that, yes, fine. And they may mean well in some regards when they do with their philanthropy. But by and large, politically, they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. And I think people are waking up to that. Yeah, well, Jeff Bezos, listen, you say he's not putting his money where his mouth is. Um, I just disagree a tiny bit because by buying the Washington Post, which is, by all accounts, a losing operation, there's no money to be made there. He's losing money on the Washington Post. But he basically formed the propaganda wing of the Democratic Party because Nancy Pelosi, we had a clip of her last week, and she talked about how they do smear campaigns. How they do smear campaigns is they put out a whole bunch of fake information, they feed it to a bunch of reporters, then the reporters print it, and then she said we do the wrap-up smear. What we do is we take the negative articles and we say, look, the Washington Post is even saying it, so they create their source, right? And Jeff Bezos has been across the board committed to the Washington Post being, you know, basically the Scribner for the Democratic National Party, if you ask me. Absolutely. Listen, along with the New York Times, I mean, John, again, uh, other than maybe, you know, wrapping expensive China when you move or putting it in your birdcage, I don't see a lot of, you know, positive uses for the New York Times or the Washington Post. And I think more and more Americans are seeing it because their circulation sales are down. Obviously, their online traffic is still decent, but people are waking up to the content of that publication. Again, Jeff Bezos doesn't seem to mind whatsoever. As you mentioned, again, it seems like an investment that he doesn't mind losing money on. But at the end of the day, I think more and more people are realizing that whether it's investing in news publications or just, you know, this sudden woke philosophy that they that they tend to, uh, put, you know, put forth in on their social media or in public appearances. I just think many Americans are sick of it uh, as far as I'm concerned. I tend to agree with you. Um my, one of my producers, Tom, was just telling me he lives over in, with, in Jersey by you. And um, Fernando's also a, a faculty member at Bergen Community College. And uh, Tom was saying that uh, the governor of New Jersey just came out and said that there's going to be a whole host of new taxes coming for you guys. There's going to be a gas tax. There's also going to be all these toll hikes on you guys. So um, little by little, they're just taxing the heck out of the residents of the Garden State. Well, it's a typical tax and spend philosophy that many liberal governors and mayors have across this country, John. And again, pre-COVID, uh, under New Jersey law, the state budget has to be signed by June 30th, obviously because of what happened with COVID-19. That was pushed back to the fall. Now, 
it's pretty much, you know, budget hearing after budget hearing for the legislature and the governor alike. And really the governor's justification is that because the state wasn't taking in revenue during COVID-19, they have to make that up somehow. So these toll hikes are to sort of, you know, justify the spending on this budget in addition to the gas tax where, you know, Governor Murphy is trying to sort of pull the wool of our eyes and say, well, this is for infrastructure projects. This is to make sure that our roads are uh, the best condition that they possibly can be. John, back in 2016, going to 2017, there was a gas tax already implemented, okay? And for whatever reason, that money was put in a lockbox, and I haven't seen any infrastructure improvement since then. So, All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if we let's see if we get a better connection with Fernando because we want to talk about out of the upping illegal fund and deportations. Maybe if they froze the free community college for a year, or even froze the current gas tax before the new one takes effect on October first. I'll be honest with you, that would be better spending in New Jersey. It seems like the governor that's a foreign concept to him. Right, and um, actually a good sign in New Jersey. I guess you know we're talking about those toll hikes, and I'm sure they'll be. You know, you you, hit, you go to New Jersey, you, you they put a toll in front of the in front of the target. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah, tolls right. everywhere. Um, but they're raising the tolls. I'm sure that's going to be on the New Jersey Turnpike. But uh, one police force down in New Jersey is doing something beautiful for our country and replacing flags on the Jersey Turnpike. Right? That's right. Uh, last week, uh, leading up to 9/11. Uh, the governor somehow, in his infinite wisdom, instructed the Turnpike Authority to start removing American flags over all the overpasses along the Jersey Turnpike. And this got a lot of outrage by New Jersey residents, John. And I'll be honest with you, I'm really glad that virally they put the governor under the microscope. Again, you know, the week leading into 9-11, we all know what a significant anniversary that is for us here in the New York, New Jersey area, with so many residents perishing 19 years ago. And for the governor to remove American flags leading up to the anniversary, it's just tone deaf. Like on, on September 11th, John, last, last week, I don't know if you knew this, the governor signed um, a law into effect declaring Juneteenth a holiday for the forecoming future. That's all well and good, but don't do it on 9-11. Have a little respect for the lives lost and the families that, you know what, are still grieving. It just, it's a reminder again that this governor is tone deaf when it comes to priorities. And you know what? God bless the Robbinsville Police Department and other municipalities that got together and put flags back up on all the overpasses. No, you're right. God bless, because, uh, you know, it's seeming this these days, um, you know, one of my buddies, my former business partner, Craig Shapiro, he's quite the leftist liberal. Um, and, you know, he put a whole post up there talking about how the American flag means nothing now because Trump's the American flag. And it is good to see people, even in a blue state, a somewhat blue state like New Jersey, to see that the cops and the, and the people, and I know um, retired uh, Lieutenant Commander of the U.S. Navy, Stephen Rogers, um, who's part of the Campaign for America, was there, and also uh, Republican Congressman Chris Smith was in support of hanging the flags and actually helped hang a flag on the turnpike um, and talked about how these flags were there since September 11th. And it's strange that this guy, Murphy, would start taking them down right around 9-11. John, again, it's just it's, it's a reminder about why so many New Jerseyans. Now, again, there are pockets of the state that are conservative. I mean, the, the bigger cities like Patterson and Newark, Elizabeth and Trenton. I mean, they tend to be very blue. You know, the Democrat machines run it like with an iron fist there. But in a lot of the suburbs in central and south Jersey alike, there's a strong conservative presence there. And when this happened last week, I can't tell you how many people reached out to me and said, are you going to talk about this on Real Talk next week? I said, absolutely. I think this is irresponsible of the governor. And it's tone deaf, again, leading up to the 9-11 anniversary. And again, it's, you know what, John, I don't, I don't want to say that every Democrat is unpatriotic. But guess what? Those people that are unpatriotic tend to be Democrats, John. No doubt about it. And, you know, oddly enough, you would think in this crazy time, right, approaching 9-11, we're talking about 20 flags. Obviously, they were tattered flags. They've been there since 2001. Okay, fine. 
a smart governor who was a little politically savvy, he'd get one of his couple of his people and say, hey, go get 20 new flags, take the old ones down, put these back up so that we can represent old glory properly. But instead, he just rips them down. And thank God, again, for the Robbinsville Police Force and uh, Lieutenant Commander Steve Rogers and uh, Rep Chris Smith, because at least somebody's doing something right over there in Jersey. Uh, other than you, he's always doing the right thing. And uh, we're going to see you on Saturday at the... At the big bash, we celebrate. That's great, John. I'll be celebrating your... start waiting for you there. I heard you're going to be celebrating your thirties. Oh, I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's my man. He's always on the spot for us. He's my money guest on Mondays all the time. Fernando Uribe, check out his show, um, Politically Direct, on Eyes on NJ. Thank you, Fernando. You the bomb. Thank you, John. All right, we're going to take a quick break right here. We're going to come back. Uh, the staff will breeze through. See if I made any mistakes today. And uh, we'll cover whatever news of the day is left that I haven't gone on a crazy rant about right after this.